Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Boerter. Name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather celebrating the love of God for us as children. As we come to Him, we might remember the things that stand as obstacles in our relationship with God and with others. We ask now for His forgiveness and His healing. He came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. He came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came that we might have a new and abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace, so as to become a dwelling place pleasing to you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. If you will, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has placed before you fire and water. Stretch out your hand for whichever you wish. Before a person are life and death, good and evil, and whichever they choose will be given to them. For great is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and sees everything. The eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, and he knows every deed of man. He has not commanded anyone to be ungodly, and he has not given anyone permission to sin. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his decrees. With all their hearts they seek him. Blessed are those who walk in the law of the Lord. You have laid down your precepts to be carefully kept. May my ways be firm in keeping your statutes. Blessed, Blessed are those who walk in the law of the Lord. Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes, that I may see the wonders of your law. 
Blessed are those who walk in the law of the Lord. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes, and I will keep them to the end. Grant me insight, that I may keep your law and observe it wholeheartedly. Blessed are those who walk in the law of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Among the mature we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glorification. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But, as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I've come to abolish the law and the prophets. I've come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever then relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But he who does them and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the men of old, You shall not kill, and whoever kills shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother shall be liable to the council, and whoever says you fool shall be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, And there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Make friends quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out till you've paid the last penny. You've heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, that everyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and throw it away. It is better to lose one of your members then that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. It was also said, Whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife except on the ground of unchastity, makes her an adulteress. 
And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard it was said to the men of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say simply be yes or no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. This is the gospel of the Lord. The gospel of today may sound radical to our ears, but its purpose is to deepen God's command and ultimately to fulfill it through the law of love. While Jesus does not intend to abolish the old law, he promises to fulfill it or to realize the, new, the law in a new way. And it is new, utterly at odds with the secular and religious rulers of his time. Jesus says, I tell you, Unless your holiness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not enter the kingdom of God. We are used to giving an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. We are used to following the letter of the law. But we do not go beyond it. Take murder, for example. We know that murder has been forbidden in the Ten Commandments. But now Jesus is taking us deeper to the things that can lead us to murder. It is unspoken anger, violent language, the quiet contempt that we hold for, a, for the other. It is our unwillingness to forgive. Jesus says, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has something against you, leave your gift. Go be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. How different would our own Eucharist be if we took Jesus seriously? The resentments that we hold against our parents, our children, our spouses, our neighbors, they would have to be resolved before we could approach the altar as our best selves. Maybe that's why our communion is preceded by the sign of peace. Just as we ask God, look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. So also, we who have sinned against each other must see the eyes of faith, and forgive one another. The exaggerated speech of Jesus is meant to make us sit up and take notice. Plucking one's eyes out or cutting off an offending limb is not a teaching that Christians take literally. If we did, there'd be many blind people in the church Many with tongues, hands, feet, and yes, even sexual organs. The lesson here is that we must use sights and limbs and organs for God's glory, not to abuse people made in the image and likeness of God, but treating them as objects of our own lustful desire. Jesus again stresses the dignity of the human person. Proclaiming God's design for marriage and radically prohibiting divorce are characteristics of Jesus' teaching that he will return to later in this gospel. This prohibition was to safeguard the rights and the dignity of women, just as nowadays 
they are so easily discarded, so too it was in the time of Jesus. In a similar way, Jesus teaches that love demands that our speech be truthful, that we mean what we say to one another, so that we can live lives of integrity. And so what do the scriptures today do for us? They move us beyond paying lip service to the law of God. And they're asking us, what is the purpose of the law? When we honor its intent, not simply its letter, we, in the words of Ben Sirach, in the first reading, we choose life. We then choose a life of discipleship, the life which can only be brought to perfection through the love which Christ commands us to live. So now, brothers and sisters, let us proclaim the words of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers to the Lord. That God's goodness will be a source of wisdom for all the members of the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's goodness will be a source of peace for nations and peoples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's will will be a source of comfort for those who suffer in mind or in body. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's goodness will be a source of holiness for us as we walk in the way of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's goodness will be a source of everlasting life for those who have died. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with Pope Francis that parishes, placing communion at the centre, may increasingly become communities of faith, fraternity and welcome towards those most in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask you to hear our prayers, those that we've spoken out loud, but also those that we pray in the silence of our hearts. For we ask them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. By the meaning of this water and wine, where we come to share in the divinity of Christ, humble himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. 
fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, be pleased with this gift we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and for all God's holy church. Lord God, may these offerings cleanse and renew us. May it become for those who do your will the source of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord of our hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the source of all that is good and holy in the world. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis our Pope, with Butit Lachale, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to share eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
that all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take your grace in the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take your grace in the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the, of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy really that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be holy. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may long always for that food by which we truly live. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes. And Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to give God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.